This is a Dell Optiplex 9020, or at least what's left of it. It's just missing the top cover, but it's still missing it. And so I figured, you know, my, maybe I'll just Hackintosh it. And actually, it's a lot easier than a lot of tutorials make it seem. So instead of talking for like two minutes before actually showing you how to do this, I'm just going to show you how to do it. The first thing you will obviously need is a macOS image. So I have Monterey here, which is what I'm going to be using for demonstration purposes in this video. This specific file came from this website, but I'm actually just going to provide it to you because to, in order to download this file, you have to do like a whole bunch of things with like random links. It's basically where you have to like wait for like an ad or something and like a certain amount of time passes and then you can download it. But instead of doing all that, you can just download it from here without waiting or any ads. You will also need an EFI file. This specific file here is only for this Dell Optiplex 9020. So if you have a, the same exact configuration as this Optiplex 9020, then this should just work perfectly fine. Now, not everyone watching this video is probably going to have a Optiplex 9020. So if you want an EFI file for your system, just simply type in your system's name and then EFI after it. And you should usually be able to find a result that will work for you within the first like three things. This is what I'm using currently for mine and it works perfectly fine. I have tested different EFIs on different computers other than Dell's and it's a bit iffy, especially on like Lenovo computers and certain HP computers, but for the most part, it works perfectly fine on most Dell computers. After downloading those files, you wanna to head to this website and download this. After it downloads, go ahead and open it up and then insert a 16 gigabyte or above flash drive. The rest of this is pretty straightforward. You simply just select the operating system file you downloaded, then select the USB disk you inserted and then click flash. Once it's done flashing, the flash drive will not show up on Windows. So don't worry, it did, it did not disappear or anything. It's just simply formatted for Mac OS and will, won't show up on Windows. After the image is done downloading, go ahead and close that platform, then open your browser and then download Disk Genius. This platform basically allows you to see your drive now that you can't see it in Windows because it is a Mac OS formatted drive. Now this program is pretty straightforward. So you need your EFI file in like a place you can access it. So I just have it here on my desktop. And basically you'll need to click here and then go up here and then click EFI zero and then simply delete the one that it installed for you. So do that, wait for it to delete and simply just drag and drop the one that you downloaded for your specific computer. Click that and don't change any of that. Just click okay. Wait for it to finish like that and that's pretty much it that's the efi file correctly installed and then after that you can close this and then your usb drive is good to go after the flash drive is done just simply eject it and then come over to well the computer you want to put mac os on i got a little setup here you know temporary thing got linus there emotional support you know i've installed the flash drive now on dell computers the boot menu key is f12 so uh, once you turn the computer on you'll just want to smash f12 to get into the boot menu because you don't want it to boot into an operating system if you have one on there. If you don't have one, you shouldn't have to worry about this. It'll automatically go into the boot menu, but still, you know, just in case. I have an existing Windows install on the SSD, so it'll try to boot into Windows. And once you're in the boot menu, you wanna go down here and select this one. It'll be different depending on what USB device you're using. So mine says USB disk 3.0. Yours might say 2.0 or 3.1, but it'll be basically the same thing. You wanna hit enter. And at this part, you wanna be pretty quick. If you have an existing Windows installation, it'll try to boot into that within like five seconds. So you have to, switch over to Monterey quickly. And then you'll have this, I think it's called Verb Verbos or something like that. It basically, it, it looks scary, but it's really not. It's just Mac OS loading. It, it, this actually, I think happens in normal Mac OS. It's just hidden normally. I'm not really sure, but I'll time lapse this. As you can see, it didn't really take that long and that's pretty much it. That's Mac OS running on a Windows device. And here is a full boot from the computer with the system newly installed. So this menu kind of just exists and you'll have to just always click OS SSD. And it's a little slow at first, but ultimately not that much slower than just a regular old Mac. It depends on if you actually hit the button, you know, but it'll do this thing again. It always does this. I don't, I think there might be an option to disable that. I'm not really sure, but this is basically the same as if you were to see an Apple logo. And as you can see, once it does show the Apple logo, it loads in pretty fast. And as you can see, you can type in my password, click enter. That was a screenshot. And it's a little slow, you know, but otherwise pretty fast. And as you can see, Mac OS thinks is a iMac Pro 2017 with a three gigahertz quad core i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM, Intel HD graphics, and it even has its own serial number. Now, naturally, since Mac OS is running on, well, a Windows computer, there's going to be some issues such as Wi-Fi. So on Dell computers, the Wi-Fi card is almost always an Intel card. And as you can see, the Wi-Fi is indeed not working. There's an exclamation mark up there. And using this hack and tool, uh, I guess, yeah, hack and tool, it is, as you can see, all of the stuff related to Wi-Fi and pretty much anything, Intel is all disabled. There is a solution though. 
this computer will need to be connected to the internet though so you can plug in the ethernet connector or you could like tether your phone using usb and use a hotspot that way but anyway you need to download open core configure it simply just type it into safari and it'll be the first result after it's downloaded you need to uh, mount your like file system so go up here and it'll kind of it might be covered by text and just click mount uh i think mine is our, oh yeah mine is already mounted so if you click mount it'll it'll say mount and as you can see there's my efi file and basically we need access to this file to change a few things in this file, you need to click EFI, then go to OC, and then you'll need to go to the file labeled text. And within this file, you'll we'll basically add a few things. So in your downloads, uh, I'll have these links in the description. You need this one right here, which is airport uh, something WM. Go ahead and just drag and drop that in there. Uh, mine already has one, so I'll just replace it. And then you'll need to also put this one. And then that's pretty much it for that. After that, you can go ahead and exit all that. You'll need to open your applications folder and then Along with this, you should have downloaded a heliport right here. So click that and you'll just simply drag it. So you can either do it here or just drag it directly into your applications folder. And basically you'll just do that. And then your Wi-Fi should just work. Once it's installed, you should notice a little icon up there. Uh, it's just basically another Wi-Fi icon and your Wi-Fi should show up. Now I was disconnected. Uh, you probably just saw there. It keeps disconnecting though because the Wi-Fi antennas are in the top case of this thing and they are missing. So the, the Wi-Fi range is very bad on this thing and my router is like all the way over there. So it's like barely reaching. But doing that will fix your Wi-Fi issue. I held off from doing Hackintosh so long because I thought it was like really hard to do and it was super difficult and it was gonna take a lot of time and it was a big learning curve. But realistically, this took me like a day to do and I've never done it before. Also to be helpful, I'll try to list every possible EFI file I can for like common computers such as this 3090, uh, actually what, what, no 9020, uh, because people like to use these all the time for stuff exactly like this because especially computers like this, they make good like random replacements for Mac minis instead of spending like, $300 on a Mac Mini, just spend like $80 on one of these. In this case, I got this one for free. So like, it's it's like, I think the specifications are close to like a 2014, 2015-ish Mac Mini. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll just, just to be helpful, I'll just put them in the description, you know? So if you actually need them, you can find them there instead of searching and scouring the internet. I will try to make different videos along the line, probably with different newer versions of macOS. I might even try the latest version of macOS and see how well that works. So if you if you like this video and want to see better ones like this eventually in the future, then subscribe and maybe even like the video.